right. So communication log, um, once you have everything forwarded and you're going to forward it to this email address here, you get a different one for each file. Once everything's been forwarded to that email address or CC to that email address and the transaction is getting ready to close, then here you would put all correspondence has been forwarded or CC'd. No, whatever. And then you'd hit save. Right. And then that might take a while to get reviewed until the whole file is complete. Um, the other question that you had was with the closing document. So down here we have our commission demand authorization. So you're going to put in your commission request through command and then the MCA, which is now Emily, will email you a copy of your demand here. And then everybody who's on this demand needs to sign the demand. So like this one was for myself and Shannon. So we both signed it that it was accurate. And then sometimes I just have them sign. So you have the first page of the demand, which we'll go over the demand in detail in a minute. I'm not going to go over this one because this one doesn't have all the deductions. Well, actually it does because we can go over Shannon's side of it. Um, so, so does Shannon have to sign because she's getting part of the commission? Yes. Or, okay. Yes. So, so like, do you guys typically sign for like the mentor program and like the PC peeps, like you guys would sign that also then? Yes. Or no? Yep. Okay. So any agent that's listed on this will sign and you can either have them sign the top page or they can sign their individual because everybody gets an individual detail on your demand. So you can sign the individual detail either way works. It doesn't matter. When you send it over to title and escrow, they don't need one signed by you as long as it's signed down here by the MCA or whoever created it, you can send it on over to them. They don't need the one signed by you. Um, so we just need it for our file. You'll upload the signed copy here under the commission demand. Down here where it says commission checks and final closing statement, you guys don't have to worry about those two items. What'll happen is when your file closes, Title and escrow send the closing package to the office. And then um, our MCA or the front desk person, I don't know who's going to do it now, probably the MCA, um, scans it in and uploads it to the file. Sam has a question. Yes. So when you send the demand to the title company, you know, usually you're like on a link with a bunch of people. Do you just send it separately to? title or does everyone need to see it? Um, no, I usually just send it directly to the title team. So okay. not the other agent or not um, the lender. Okay. Just directly. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Can I ask a quick question? Speaking of threads, do you use, a, um, like I got overwhelmed on my uh, email chain with all the different emails coming in. Like, do you start a new one after so long or do you just continue trying to sift through 999 emails? Um, I usually um, will do a new email. So if I'm sending over something, well, okay. So my TC normally sends all the documents over. So I let her deal with that. But if I have questions or something that I need to correspond about, um, I'll usually start a new thread so that it has the subject is like well issues or pest clearance or whatever it is. So it makes it really easy for me to find. And it makes it even better if you're really good at going like pest clearance on 7505 Elizabeth Road. And that way you can search the address and all those emails will show up. Okay. Okay. That's great. Thank you. And then one more other question per se, um, like, so I, I, I have, an, I have two emails and I started out with my um, personal Gmail, but then I moved everything over to my Keller Williams email. And so I, I stumbled on a few corresponding emails on my other email. Is it too late for me to go back in the sky slope and put that as a part of my email um, communication log? No, absolutely. At any time. Even if the file's been archived, you can still CC that or forward it to that email address associated with the file and it'll add it to the log. Okay, so just put in that particular email address associated with that address? Yep. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. And Mylon, I'm just gonna say, 
I'm a huge person on putting a folder, like a new folder to the side and having it that way too, to just dump everything. Like, so even now Amy's saying the subject line, but then dumping it into that folder that corresponds with it. I'm just saying, that's just you how I do it. Set I up rules. Then I gotta learn how to do that. So here- I'll help you. Yeah, I Thank have that. You. I can do that too, my. So Thank if you, you go into, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Hold on, maybe it will. I have clients and then a folder under it, buyers sellers and then I put the address well I just did put the address under yeah so you can go in here and um create folders right like 124 Oakmead or Colby or Hawthorne or Bel Air or Azalea or Rio Grande um so you can go in here and create new folders um, or new labels I guess is probably what it's called let's try new label we're going to call this one um, 818 Stone Gate. And then you can nest it under something. So if you had like transactions, so like I've got a transactions tab. So I'm going to nest this label under transactions and hit create. Now, if I go back here and look, hold on. Here's my Stonegate folder that I just created, and it's sitting underneath transactions. And then what you can do is you can um, set a rule. So right, there's nothing in there right now. So I could automatically add stuff. So I could come in here and um, go inbox and search 818 Stonegate. And then let's say I wanna take this one and this one, and this one, just for kicks. And then we're gonna go, um, mark is red, let's see, labels, label as Stonegate. So now what'll happen is now if I go back to that folder, those three files are in there. And what you can also do is, um you can set up rules inside of this and so um let's try settings nope all right hold on it just takes me a while to figure out how to do it again give me a second I know there's a way. Oh, that just changed how it was laid out. Applications. All right, let's go help. Can someone remind on the call later on um, to ask about how the TC coordinator gets all the info? Amy, what are you trying to do? Well, I, I was just wondering, like, if your TC has, like, all those, like, documents, like, how they end up getting all those documents, and so that's what I want to know. Like, if all the emails are coming to us, at what point, how, do this, how does the TC get all the documents for them to then upload? Because it seems like we would get all the info, and then we would have to forward to them, and then them upload, and it seems like it would just be a, a lot yes so somebody to re remind re remember that for later yes so while i'm looking at this um you so if you have a transaction coordinator what happens is when you send out like your initial email you would tell everybody included so like normally my initial email goes out to like the listing or the buyer's agent or the listing agent the title company their lender and i would cc my transaction coordinator on it and then i would say hey um, you know, my transaction, please make sure to include my transaction coordinator on all correspondence. And then I would include her email address and contact information there. Um, and then that way, most people then start including your transaction coordinator. Most time other agents have a transaction coordinator. So then a lot of times the transaction coordinators are kind of doing everything behind the scenes for you and taking care of everything. But that's how. And then you just have to make sure they get everything, but usually then they're just included as part of the transaction. Okay. Thank you. 
Yes. All right. Open Gmail in the search box. Click the show search options. All right. So let's try this. Show search options. Oh, here we go. Oh, let's see. Let's go. We're going to have has the words 818 Stonegate. And we don't care about that in the last month. Search all meal, mail, I said meal. We're going to forward it to, no. Apply the label, Stonegate. Why is it not showing up here? Why does it hate me? It's down at the bottom. Oh, you know why? It's because you guys yeah. are in my way again. Okay, hold on. Let me move you. Sure, blame us. That's an easy out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. Apply label. I was like, I can't see any further down. All right, so anytime there's a message that has 818 Stonegate, it's going to automatically apply this label to it and it's gonna to apply to matching. So then I'm gonna hit create filter. Now it went through and sorted all of those. So now if I come back down here to Stonegate, now see all of the ones that have that in there are all automatically put in that folder. And if somebody sends me a new email, it'll automatically throw it into that folder or that label. Um, that, that is so awesome for one, but my question to you is, so if they send you a new email, will it come on this main screen or will you have to continuously go into the folder to see if anything is new? It'll be in both. Okay. Fantastic. And see, it's like red. So like this one's labeled transaction 818 Stonegate in my mm -hmm. inbox, mm -hmm. but it's also going to be in there. And then that also helps you sort because you can, I don't know if you just noticed, but I just changed the label color to red. Mm -hmm. So um, by just changing the label color. So now let's say that I wanted to create a new label because this is kind of fun. Let's, um, this is a fun activity here. Create new label. We're gonna call it um, 337 Ponderosa. And we're gonna nest this Ooh, one. Is that a new listing? It, it was a new listing. It's already in contract. It didn't even come on the market. Oh, nice. I don't know if that's nice or not. Um, I mean, it, it is good. It's fabulous. I'm glad. But then, you know, all the Legion opportunities are gone. All right. So now we have Ponderosa. So let's say I'm going to label this one green. And then I'm going to come up here and create a filter. So I'm going to say so, has words 337 Ponderosa and dated within the last month and search all mail, and we're gonna have create filter, and we're going to apply the label of Ponderosa, and apply to matching conversations, create filter. Now, it's I've got red labels and green labels for my transactions. So not only is it sorting it into its own little folder, but it also has labeled it in here to make it easier for me to sort through my emails. That's awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. If you find, 10, if you find us to read two, I'm like, if you find us to read two single story, please let me know. Maybe we could do another off market. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, so super fun creating labels in there allows you to sort your emails a little more closely and create folders. And then once you're done, you can go in there and you can just like be like, hey, did I forward everything? You can go in there and just forward everything. And then you could delete it all and be done with it. How long do you hang on the files in your email? Technically, because they're all forwarded to Skyslope, I would probably, um, you know, you can delete them right away. It really would make a difference. And then because they sit in your trash folder for a while, 
Um, so you could always pull them back out of the trash if you needed to, or you would have access through Skyslope. Or, um, you know, you might want to, before you deleted the whole folder, you may want to keep it for like a month just to make sure there weren't any other questions or somebody being like, hey, can you re-forward over that inspection? Or I lost my home warranty information. So you didn't have to look someplace else for it. It's all in Skyslope, but if you wanted it readily accessible in your email, you could leave it there. Okay. It went over that, Masi, I'll just say, you know, and it was only a 3-1. Gotcha. But so, if you have any more, let me know, even if it does go on the market. Okay, <laughs> will do. All right, so back to Skyslope. Um, all right, so we were talking about this closing documentation, the communication file, right? We talked about how a transaction coordinator would get the documents. And then um, we, the commission checks and final closing, we don't worry about those because the office is going to upload those. We're going to upload the signed commission demand. Um, let's look at this commission demand. I think I already had it pulled up, but let's look at it again so I can show you the breakdown, even though this one's not very exciting. Um, all right. So here is the summary of the commission demand and don't ever try to like understand this page of it because it's confusing it combines everybody's stuff into one except for whatever reason the transaction coordinator and the transaction fee like some things don't make sense to me but that's all right um so when you look at this this first line is what's going to kw vaca valley and that includes the payment to like kwri and kw so that's the kw office split and then you have each individual agent, what they're getting, what their check is, this is what your actual check is going to be. And then whoever else is getting paid out. So like KW Vaca Valley has the transaction fee and ours is split. Well, number one, I haven't reset yet since they changed the transaction fee. So I'm still on the old transaction fee. My anniversary date's coming up in like 26 days. Um, and then I'll reset to the higher transaction fee. And then Shannon and I split it because of our team situation. We split it um out and this is this one's wrong it's wrong interesting i didn't catch that but all right we'll just ignore that for now come back and revisit it it wasn't wrong on my side i didn't check mine all right and then and then my transaction coordinator same thing here shannon and i split that so it's broken out differently and my transaction coordinator doesn't just do transaction coordinated and she does um she's more like an admin for the transaction she does more than the normal transaction coordinator. So that's why this fee is a little higher. Normally your transaction coordinator is going to run somewhere between 250 and 400 bucks, depending on what you have them do. Okay. But that's why that's split out differently. If we scroll down a page, we're going to just keep scrolling to Shannon's um, because hers has all the breakdown on it. So this is the detail for Shannon. So on the detailed page for Shannon, it's gonna still show the sales price, the total commission for the transaction, her unit count, which is 0 0.10 because she gets 10%. Um, it, so here's her gross commission. So if we look at the commission, it's 13,125. So her gross commission at 10%, right? We just moved the decimal over. So we have $1,312.50. So that makes sense that that's 10% of 13,125. Um, then what happens is we have the associate split here is 80%, right? So you should be, everybody should be on an 80% split. Um, when we look over here, here's the net commission and here's the breakdown. We have $65 in deductions, which is um, this down here are the deductions. So we have the transaction coordinator fee and the transaction fee. We have the associate, oh, sorry, the net commission. That's interesting. All right. Um, I'll come back to that here in a minute. Um, the associate check, well, okay, so the net commission is after KW takes their split is how this is calculated out. And then the associate check is down here because it's going to be this minus the deductions equal the associate check. These deductions you're responsible for, they're on your tax taxable income. So when you got your get your 1099 at the end of the year, it's going to be based on this number up here 
not this number down here because you're responsible to write off these deductions. Okay, the company commission here should be, let me do the math. It should be 13, 12, 50 times 20%. Um, and sometimes there's another one. So that's $262.50. So that's the 20%. If there is a um, number up here, this associate royalty, this is the 6% that we pay to KWRI or Keller Williams International. Shannon has already capped out. You pay 6% until you hit 3,000. Shannon's already capped on this associate royalty, so she doesn't have that. She just has the company commission getting paid to KW um, locally, the KW Vaca Valley. Okay, does this make sense to everybody so far? So we're gonna take this gross amount of commission, and then we're going to calculate the company commission here. And then we would also, if you hadn't capped on your 3000, you would have this number up here that's currently blank. We subtract both of those numbers to get the net commission. And then we subtract any deductions from the net commission to get your check. And then you said the deductions, that is something that's our write-off. Like we can write that off. The deductions are your write-off, the okay, um, transaction fee to KW Vaca Valley, your transaction coordinator fees, if you were paying for pest repairs out of the close of escrow, or if you were paying for your buyer's home warranty, if you were giving any sort of a credit to make something right, like I totally screwed up a pest deal on Walnut, so I took care of that. I actually paid for it out of the close of escrow, but that would have been on here as well, um, and those are all my deductions to take as write-offs. Got it. Okay. 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 Just to make sure I'm I'm understanding you correctly, the yep. associate royalty is the KWRI, which is a separate entity from a, a separate um, max um, commission that we pay from our. I think I'm confusing myself. Okay, so you know <laughs> I cap out at what twenty twenty three thousand, I think. That's the company cap. And then the associate royalty is separate. Am I, am I understanding you correctly? So you should cap out. So based on the new commission split and the new cap, the new cap is 17, 17,000. Yeah, but I, I was already employed before the okay. other, that's not mine. So the new one. Okay. So yeah. So whatever yours is, so you have like the new one. So when you reset Mila, you'll have, I think it's at 16,000. And then you have the 3,000 on top of that for 19. So the 16,000 comes to the local office at that 20% mm -hmm. split. So oh. if you came in before the split, Myla, you're probably at a 24,000 mm -hmm. um, cap. And then the three, then there's 3,000 on top of that. So with the new split, it's 16 and then three for a total of 19. And the 3,000 gets paid out at 6%. And that goes to KW International, KWRI. And that's all any agent or any office pays to KWRI is this $3,000 per agent based on their, their uh, production. And okay. that caps out at 3,000. So our okay. total based on the new split at 16,000 plus 3,000 for 19, you cap at a total of 19. You usually hit that 3,000 number a lot faster than you hit your regular cap. Although with the new split, it may be that it may end up being about the same. And what's the percentage of the 16% or the 16,000? What percent is that taken out every time? 10? At 20%. 20%. 20%. And the 3,000 is at 6%? At six, yeah. For each, each transaction. Okay, got it. Okay. So you get your commission and then they take the 20%, the 2080, right? And give you your 80. Then out of that 80, you get the 6% taken and then your 10% PC and your 10% mentor and then your transaction, all those little things, right? Yeah, so like when you Just pay, to kind of break it down. So when you pay your split, your split's gonna be based off this gross number here. So they're gonna take 26% of this basically. So it'll be 20% of this to KW Back of Valley, 6% to KWRI. 
And then your mentor or coaching fees also off this as well. So the only thing after for the net commission is your deductions. Any deductions, yes. Got it, okay. Oh, okay, okay. And so well, the KWR, I'm sorry, did I cut somebody off? No. The KWRI, the KW, the 16,000 goes to our market center. That goes to our market center. Oh, okay, and then the other one goes to the big Keller Williams. The corporate. Okay, the okay. cool. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yep. Got it. And, um, you had $15 was your, um, was your transaction fee, is it because you've done so, like so many transactions already and because you're the broker? Because typically isn't it 150 yeah, so I haven't I think reset. It's after it's in so I'm still on the old cap system, not the new cap system. So I'm still at the $65 transaction fee and not the new 150 transaction fee. I'll switch over to the new one when I reset on March 1st. Got you. And this one shows as 15 because it's Shannon and I split it. So it really should have been 650, but it has 15. So now I'm going to have to double check, get my money back. Get Shannon's money back. Um, and <laughs> anyways, that's her deduction. She signed off on it. <laughs> um, but that's how you look at your demand. Again, it's really hard to look at this picture because like if I had a split to KW Vaca Valley and Shannon had a split to KW Vaca Valley, it's going to combine all of this into this number here. And so it's hard to split it out and figure it out. So the best bet is to go down to your page and look at your individual breakdown and make sure this looks right. Okay, yeah, this is 20%. I haven't capped. Yes, 6%. This is supposed to be right. And my deductions look correct. I'm sorry, Amy, can I ask you one question one more time? You can the ask com any the company commit the company commission versus paid to Keller Williams. I totally missed that part. What are what is one of those the KWIR and one or no? Um, so if there was money to KWRI, it would be up here under associate royalty. Oh, okay. So what is the company commission pay to, what are, what are those two? The company commission down here, that is to KW Vaca Valley. And I believe if there was an associate royalty and payable to KW, it would combine our commission, company commission, then it would put down here it would add those two together for the total amount paid to oh so that's just the total of the one yeah. above with the oh okay got you, got you. it's not too separate it's just i got you oh okay reiterating so the kw that. and the kwri i believe so combined. okay gotcha and where where would it fall because obviously it's not here for you guys for the mentor program but like where would that fall would that be like another line created like on ours where like the 80 and 100 percent like the split is so no, so you wouldn't see it here. It's going to show up. It probably shows up. It'll show up either one of two ways. On your demand, well, let's um, let's look at one. I don't know how Chris is doing it right now. Once you add it to like Amy had showed us um, with the Skyslope video of how to add um, additional like deductions. So once you add those additional deductions um, through Skyslope, wait, through, no, through your command on demand on command, then it'll populate when they send you that piece of paper that Amy's showing you or the yeah. email. However, it's they're still not doing it right. So I'm going to see if I can get it fixed. Okay, because what it's doing is it's coming down here and breaking down the unit. So like on this one, it's got instead of a uh, hundred, it'd be one unit. Um, we're on mine. It was like 0.9. This one's showing us 0.8. And the reason it's showing us 0.8 is it's 80% um, of the total transaction going to um, the new agent. And then 10% going to the mentor and 10% or 0.1 going to the mentor and 0.1 going to PC. So what it does is it takes the total commission and calculates it based on 0.8 and then does all your deductions based on this number here. And then on 
my taggy, it gives me 0.1 or 10% here and does my deductions based on that number. Oh, sorry. See, I'm on a 70% split. You yeah, guys I was gonna say, why, why is that? <laughs> because you're the broker or? <laughs> because I noticed that too. I was like, wait, why is she less? <laughs> because we used to, everybody used to come on at a 70% split. Oh. And they keep asking me if I want to change and I don't mind it. I'm going to cap anyways. So 70%, I pay 30% instead of 20%. It just gets me to capping faster. Oh. Last year, I paid it all in one transaction. Okay, whatever, okay. Amy. Don't Amy. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna pay it. Mm -hmm. I was gonna oh, pay I'm not muted. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> I, was um, I, I just sent you mine. Um, I, I just texted it to you and mine says um, one unit on it. Oh, good. For that. That's but it, it will show you, I think if you check your text message, it should, I think it has the mentor fee and then the PC peeps fee on there. I think it shows all of them. Okay, it's really small, but that's right. Hold on, I can work with this. Or is that one not it? Did I send you the wrong one? Because I think there's another one that's broken down that has Oh, no, like the this mentor one. fee and everything. Oh, wait, hold on. I was like, wait, this is the same one we were just looking at. That's weird. All right, hold on. All right, so this one looks like it was probably done correctly, um, which makes me happy. Um, so this one, uh, let's see. Oh, good. Although, um, I'm hoping I'll double check with Emily to make sure that you aren't getting hit with these, that it's being taken out of. See, all right, I'm going to talk with Emily, our new MCA, and see if I can get this fixed. Because what really should happen here is when you're in the PC and you have a mentor, they should adjust this number, this associate split down so that it's not affecting your unit. So here's my issue. Okay, when they take away and only give you 0.8 up here in the units, it affects your total units on your report and it affects my total units. Because now part of your units, I get 0.1 of your units added into my unit and it screws with all my reports, okay? And it takes away from you guys. And I don't think it should take away from you guys. I think you should get credit for the whole unit even though we're helping you with that unit. Um, it's not the same as like a team split. So I like that this one has the whole unit here. However, this deduction down here, which is accurate, um, I don't want it to count. It shouldn't be your guys's deduction. Like you shouldn't have to write off or 1099 myself or Nancy at the end of the year. This should be ultimately counted as paid out from Keller Williams. And so I just need to make sure that it's being reported appropriately. Does that make sense to everybody? So yeah. how we, how we teach you to do it in the piece or in with most of our mentors, when you go into command, you put in your commission breakdown, whatever you're paying out, and then you do these as deductions instead of paying additional agents. But I just need to make sure with Emily that it's being reported appropriately. So I'll double check with Emily to make sure that's happening. But that's how this is. So did I do it right? Because it's done, it's done right. It as a deduction. Yep. So then woohoo, kudos to you because I went over that that YouTube video like over and over <laughs> and over and over to make sure that I didn't skip something wrong. So I'm glad I did it right. Yeah, so I'll just double check with Emily that it's being reported correctly, but this is right. So the gross commission here, um, and then the associate split is paid off of that. So this is the 6% and this is the 20%. And then this is those two numbers combined, the 1,073.80. And then she's gonna have her minus her deductions here See, it's just still, it's still funky, but I'll make sure it's being reported correctly. What, what, I'm sorry. Um, uh, was this selling a home? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it was a, it was a, um, it's a new a home. new build that was, that was, um, I'm gonna call it like the, the income, it was an income restricted. So that's why the sales price is 413. Yeah. And the commission is only 1% because it's a new home build. Oh, I'm like, oh my, we better really get some listings. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. <laughs> the new Wait a minute. 
<laughs> what you can get right unless you're gonna yeah, um, no I get it yeah, yeah I was just like oh this is what we're normally gonna get okay no. oh. normally it'd be at least double this oh okay at mm. least double usually a double and a little bit more and then just to confirm so with our mentor it's two purchases and two listings right it's two purchases and two listings yep Okay. And then with MPC, PC is for a full year. Am I correct? For a year until we get you capped, Myla. Get capped. I know I'm working. Get rid of me, Myla. Come on. I, oh, I'm trying to get rid of you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just Wait, we stay in until we nothing. cap or you cap. If you cap, you get out early. If you cap, you get out early. Otherwise I kick you out in a year. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's either whatever happens first, right? So we again? don't want to get evicted. We want to move out whichever ourselves. One, <laughs> yeah, whichever one comes first, whether you cap yeah. or you get a year. Or a year yeah. What if we want to stay longer than a year? Then you can stay in longer. Do we still have to pay you? Yeah, you do. <laughs> wow. you do. Girl, what you hey, think? So you're to the that her time ain't free. The mentor, the, the mentor <laughs> goes to you, her. right? Because I've learned so much more from, like, I've learned everything from you. And I'm like, um, she better be getting something out of it. Like, <laughs> so that's I get going straight to you, right? I get the PC fee. Okay, good. So the productivity program fee, that all goes to me. Well, okay, we have good. Actually, that makes you feel good. Yeah, well, at some point, Amy did. needs to give us a party so we can have like a taco box or something. <laughs> What'd you say, Myla? Um, so after we graduate out of your program, will we still be able to look at your videos though, just in case we need reference? What? Let me screen record real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I was there for like 20 hours, you know? <laughs> so However, um, just for the record, I'm working on a program. I should probably not record this, but I am. Um, I'm working on a program that would be advantageous for you guys to potentially get move into um, after you're out of the KW Vaca Valley programs so after your year or you um, cap where you would still have access to that thing, but it would be on a monthly type basis instead of a transaction basis. Right. I remember I'll, I'll get on your waiting list here soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, one last clarification on that because so is everything done at a year? So like if you haven't had two listings and two, buy, you know what I mean? Like, or you have to have those four transactions before you don't pay a mentor. Like your, men your mentor will be with you for those two transactions, even if it takes you five years. Got it. Okay. That's what I need. You're needed. stuck okay. with them. Perfect. I'm okay Question. with it. Yes. Because things are changing so much and the market changes, like how do we get access if we have questions and or are we allowed to still come to you? <laughs> so um, as far as the PC program goes, once you graduate from the PC program at that year marker because you cap out, number one, you can always opt back in for a period of time or a period of transactions. Or like I said, as I roll out this new program, you guys will be able to opt into that program if you want where you still have access. And I'm still a broker, so I still will answer like, um, you know, your compliance related questions and help you along. Um, it just won't be like this hands-on, like you get me for four hours a week to pick my brain and um, do all that. It, it won't, it's not quite the same, but you still have the ability to bounce things off me and make sure you're doing it right or, you know, check and make sure you're getting the right forms done and stuff. Okay, time to grow up. <laughs> oh. Big girl panties. Hey, Amy, yeah. for, um, for the mentor, um, do they come into play when you go to your buyer presentation or when do they like, yes? Okay. Yes. So yeah, you, as soon as, if you've got a buyer that wants to sit down and have a buyer consultation um, or a seller that's ready to like talk about potentially listing their home, that's when you'd really pull that mentor in and be like, hey, can you go to the buyer presentation with me as my associate? Or can you do the walkthrough with me? with my seller or do the listing presentation, they would pair up with you then to do those things. So I would just tell you when I have a client and then you give me a mentor? Yes. Okay, You should it. have one assigned. If not, I'll double check. I'll make sure everybody's got mentors assigned to them. Okay, um, yeah. Clean it up the list this week, so. Um, so yeah, absolutely. 
And in certain cases, um, like, um, you know, if your mentor is not a good fit, we'll switch. Or let's say that you like your mentor, you've got a potential deal down in the Bay Area and your mentor doesn't do business down there. We can always switch you for that one transaction to a mentor that does have experience in that specific area to make sure that you're well taken care of. Got it. Because mine is probably going to be in Sacramento. <laughs> And then um, who do I call to co-op? You said Woodland, but is that for Sacramento as well? Yep. So you can okay. either call the Woodland Association of Realtors or the Sacramento Association of Realtors to co-op your key to be able to access um, any of the Metro list based lock boxes, which would be Sacramento, Placer, over to Stockton, YOLO, all of those. Either one works. Hey, was this helpful to everybody today? Yep. Extremely helpful. Thank it you. It was, so Amy. Much. Thank you. Good. Thank you.